Okay, so what, what we want to do, is it recording now? Is it? Yes. You, okay, yes. great. So what we want to do now is give a tour of the uh, Empathy Training Design Team's uh, development website. And this website is at j.mp slash empathy training. So this is a Google website where uh, our team is uh, doing all its development work for developing the empathy curriculum training and MOOC. And so I'm going to stop this and then go into the website itself. And so this is uh, going to just do you know a little bit of a tour. And we you can see what we have so far, how it's been developing. I want to give everyone an overview of, of how it how it uh, looks and works and then at, at a future meeting, you can you can kind of imagine like how how can you how would you like to contribute uh, to the design of this? Now you can take on a project uh, if you'd like. And um, so the first thing is, is we have our empathy training site. Uh, the this is the URL, kind of the short URL, and this is kind of the longer one up here. And uh, we start off with a design question. How might we design and build the culture of empathy training and project development work site? This is a little image that I've been posting to Facebook as well, kind of an invitation to, for people to take part. And the first page is really an invitation for people who might want to join the design team. So the first thing is, you know, consider joining us, empathy, design teams, forming. Uh, I was, here we have our personal and mutual global challenges. So I'm trying to state what is the social uh, problems that we're trying to address. And basically, you know, saying that we have a, you know, a lot of uh, political polarization, there's dangerous conflict and, you know, many other serious uh, problems that affect our well-being. So it's sort of a problem-oriented, uh, but it's, yeah, a statement just maybe to inspire people to kind of get involved if they want to do, you know, find solutions. So we see the solution is building a more empathic culture uh, that uh, considers the well-being and needs of all humanity and that uh, this, um, and we're developing teams that are going to work together to create this online training uh, as a MOOC. And not everybody knows what a MOOC is. It's a massive open online course. And that it's, uh, the universities are doing a lot of these courses. So it's online participation, open access via the internet. So it can really reach a lot of people. For example, the, there's a MOOC from the University of Berkeley, the Greater Good Science Center on happiness. And it actually has well over 100,000 people have taken the training. Wow. So that's what we want. We're, we got to go 100,000 people by end of next year you know, to take our training. And, you know, kind of framing who it is we're looking for. Like anybody who's an empathy advocate can join but especially like educators, trainers, mediators, designers, you know, therapists, social workers, you know, NBC facilitators. So people that have some real interest in, uh, you know, the most important thing is, is a real interest in, in drive. But a lot, of these, a lot of these skills could come in very handy, you know, for the design and development of the course and how the, uh, we're using the book, uh, Listening Well, The Art of Empathic Understanding by uh, William Miller is the core curriculum, sort of our first prototype. And so this book outlines simple and misspelled here, skills, <laughs> assailable, not assailable, as accessible skills of how to listen more deeply and speak more authentically. And the overall framework is it's like a book club we read a chapter and then we uh, discuss the at the we discuss it in the empathy circle process. So we introduce people to the empathy circle process, and we deepen the skills for the 
empathic listening. You know, every meeting, hopefully we're getting a little bit better. And this was our first pilot group, which is all of you. We're the first team to get the ball rolling. So it's, this is a momentous group. <laughs> Our Shah is <laughs> raising your hands in excitement. <laughs> pioneers, pioneers. Pioneers, you are all are the pioneers. And so you get your, our due here, uh, respect. That's a respect. <laughs> Um, familiarize, so this is how to take part, familiarize yourself with the project, review, you know, you can, if, or this is like for people who see this, you know, if you want to take part, uh, you know, review the website, and actually this video clip, they can watch this video clip too, so I'm going to post this on YouTube, uh, Facebook too. Uh, read the project overview, there's a document you send me an email and then we arrange you know for a skype call so some people i've been you know kind of talking to beforehand to just see how it'd be for a fit uh, you go into the scheduling you can schedule the dates and times that work for you and team communications uh you know here's how you can join our google email list add going to the facebook page and we have a facebook Google group as well. We're not going to show those. There's some various links uh, here as resources. And at the very bottom is an interview with uh, Bill Miller, uh, who is, uh, we're using his book as uh, sort of the prototype course. Has, any, has anyone seen this interview? Yes. Yeah, you saw it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, my list to watch the video, like, Watch later. <laughs> I'm too tired. Huh? Yeah, we're not gonna watch. Now. I just, I think I saw, watched for a few seconds and then I got tied up with something else. So that's pending to watch. Okay. So yeah, at any time. So any kind of feedback on the so what you saw so far? Does it make sense? Yep, Marsha. I have a question. Like, if you're, uh, this is just a curious question, but not intended. Um, if we are developing a project, there is a lot of time that we are spending. So, uh, do we do we uh, do we get benefit out of it, or is it just a public service? And do we have to personally facilitate facilitate in MOOC? Um, the the benefit, I guess, is it is a public service. You're contributing to this website. Uh, it's going to be publicly available, so anybody can use it, and you as a facilitator can use it. So anybody can use the, you know, you can use this as a core curriculum to facilitate your own uh, trainings. So it's sort of like a wiki, you know, like a, that you know, everyone contributes and everybody can use too. So hopefully, and hopefully we can spread it as widely as possible. And uh, you know, we have the vision of building a culture of empathy, and this training is sort of our path uh, mm -hmm. towards building that culture of empathy. Uh, what I was trying to ask, like about facilitating once, um, like I have my independent project um, with movement and all that, and if I develop my whole project and if I contribute, I don't know if, if through your website or separately, do I have to facilitate or it's going to be a recorded thing where people can just log in? and they just keep going with the course without me available as a facilitator? Oh, it can go both ways. A, a group can form. The idea is, is that a team can form of like two to six people or more, and they can go through the course on their own, be do their own facilitation, or they can hire you know, maybe one of us to be a facilitator, and we will guide them through the course, and that would be like a paid, uh, you know, if you hire somebody to be a facilitator that, that they can kind of guide you through it and you're going to get added benefit from there or you can just do it yourself that's kind of the the vision right now and then you would have experience having done the course you could help facilitate others uh through the course and uh celia you're at a uh, comment? well i wanted to uh, answer that for varsha because i thought she asked okay. that mm -hmm. uh, one, one question with that um does it mean that uh, you said you can do that yourself too? Meaning you can initiate it and start start the training. The training then is that what you're saying? Yeah, I was I was referring to the project that I personally developed 
for the movement, like yeah. movement dance or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, you can. You mean you can take this and then use it yeah. for developing your own training? Uh, not your own training, your own uh, performance art, something like that. So yeah, you can use it in any way that you yeah, would yeah. like. Uh -huh. yeah. My concern was also with regards to copyrights. Like, it's it's very confusing. So. Uh, do I get the copyrights from you? Like, do I get the permission from you? Yeah, it's going to be open source, so you can use it. Just give credit. Like, if you use something specific, say, I, yes. I, we can use this freely, and I give credit that comes from the training, this training course. So, yeah. so we're trying to, the goal is just to make it as open and accessible and for as many people to use this material as possible. So. Oh. And same way that was asking you on the uh, e email, this, if I'm uh, taking any of the activity as is, like same activity, do I have the permission to use any of the activity from the book? Because um, I think you could use it if it's a small amount, you know, and you would have to give credit. But if yeah. you're using a lot of text, you'd, you'd have to check with copyright on mm -hmm. with Bill Miller. Like we've just been using headings and so forth. And I don't think we're you know, overdoing it on the copyright. And you can also create a derivative work, which is the concept, you can rewrite it in your own words. And then, so that you can't copyright the con the idea, but just the actual text. Or you can just have people read the text in the book, buy the book, use the book, and then that's fine. Russia, I mean, Celia? And also, uh, Edwin and I talked about uh, Wow, if at the end we do not really use the whole book, what could we come up with? Mm -hmm. So we are uh, thinking of designing a six-week course, and then that is, of course, ours. So that is, uh, has everything you can use. So maybe we can come up with that uh, for that purpose as well. Yeah. yeah, so we would go through the course, learn what we can, then sort of create our own work, mm -hmm. a six-week course that we own the copyright to, and then we make it accessible to as many people using it as, as possible, because we want to spread this, you know, these tools as widely as possible. And then you don't have that problem. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that was that. Let me kind of go into the next section here. Uh, so the next chapter, part is the, if you look on this, so on the sidebar here, there's a lot of different headings and there's the book chapters. So every chapter of the book, you know, I've created a web page for it and, uh, you know, a directory here of the chapters, trying not to, you know, infringe on the copyright of it, not use too much. Uh, so we have the preface, they use the uh, quote, uh, which you, know, you can't really, is not copyrightable, just a short quote. Uh, have the, the name, the reading time. I mean, the chapters are anywhere from two to seven minutes long so far. So they're very, so far they're very short. And I think I've timed up to chapter eight. Uh, and then I created a slideshow, kind of an overview. So if this, uh, this, so if you're teaching the course, I mean, using this, you can just give a summary and this is a you know quick summary of the each chapter, and uh, that's just some notes and maybe some chapter questions that we can just generate on our own. So it goes all the way through you know all sixteen chapters. Uh, so that's that heading. There's the team design guides. So I just started on this. Is it? You know, putting together these design teams, you know, putting together resources for our design team. So if you're joining a design team, you know, you can go here and this gives you information on ordering the book. You know, some of the, you can get the first several chapters for free uh, just by on Amazon, you know, through the look inside and on Google Books. You know, sometimes people are overseas and they can't get the book right away. They can, you can see about the first three chapters, four chapters for free. Uh, there's some other outline. I've been trying to design, like, how do we form the design team so that they work effectively, you know? And so I'm kind of lay out sort of a an outline uh, of, like, what are the on-arrival questions? What are the activities, the new activities? So it's a whole 
and I'm just kind of starting with that. So having six meetings for new teams. Uh, so our group has been very much the pioneer, again, as, as you were saying, Varsha, in terms of, you know, learning. And this whole website has been created, you know, since our team started. And the activity, there'll be a website tour, which is actually this video we're creating right now is gonna go in into this. What's activism? Uh, activism is, uh, yep. The activism is that there's a couple of concepts that the uh, training has. And one is that we want to uh, uh, prepare people for activism. A lot of the trainings that I've seen with empathy is sort of how you as an individual can be a better listener, right? This is, uh, you know, how do we really build that culture of empathy and be an activist? Uh, and that means you can host empathy circles. You can uh, host empathy circles, you know, between the political left and right. You can uh, start a radical empathy forum with politicians, you know, getting politicians to start empathizing with each other, set up a local empathy tent. And this was a rally. I just kind of put the picture in there. Mm. So it's that we're, we have this, like, so Bill has a little empathy tent. He's, I mean, a little uh, intro tent, you know, and then it's kind of scaling up. Celia is getting a tent. Bob has a tent in LA and, you know, both uh, Peter and Varsha, you've talked about, you know, doing a tent there. So that's kind of like the activism, just starting to talk about it, articulate that vision of, of activism. And oh, the design brief is uh, in the design community when, um, when you design a project, you lay out the contours of the project in the design brief. So I just created this to start laying out, you know, what is it that we're trying to design? What's the format and, and so forth. So it's just kind of a started, you know, that the project is open source, you know, everyone contribute, everyone can use it, uh, et cetera. So, and, um, this part here is the new lessons, like uh, Celia mentioned that we can, we're sort of, we can create our own design. So here's uh, six new lessons we can design. And, you know, when we create a lesson, we want to create it with text and create a video presentation. So that, like the book is just written. We can create a, you know, a, a little, a lecture or a slideshow that people can see. There can be graphics, there could be cartoons. Uh, there could be discussion groups, there could be, you know, sample meetings, there could be exercises and de uh, demonstrations, uh, a feedback loop. And uh, Celia had already created a bit of an outline for, and you can, it links here to uh, six lessons, you know, that would incorporate the culture of empathy uh, concept. And I, I won't go there now, but you can follow through to, to that. So this is sort of the beginning of our own design. Uh, and so it'll slowly get fleshed out. The on arrival question. So every time the group meets, we have a different question. And those questions all go into, um, into a, its own heading. So we're kind of gathering those questions. And uh, we have our team participants. So everybody gets their own uh, web page for team participants. So that's the limelight. <laughs> that's your limelight. So we have Varsha, and there's a little picture of Varsha <laughs> doing our motion exercises. Um, you can see mine, you know. I'm trying to make it a little entertaining so you got the ears <laughs> going up. You know? and, and uh, so, who else? Does anybody else want to see theirs? Peter, I hope we're not there. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you don't feel left out. <laughs> um, and we have uh, Bill, where's Bill Filler? So Bill is always serious, but <laughs> we also know that he is not always serious. <laughs> yeah. So that's part of the team here. Uh, there's a folder for just sorting all kinds of ideas that all need to be uh, sorted out. Um, 
have a to-do list, etc. So I won't go into the details, but kind of when I have a new idea, I throw it in there and then try to you know, create a sort. Each design team has its own web page. So this was our first team and unfortunately, Bob isn't here, so you can't, we'd love to have show him this. Uh, so each of the team meetings has its own page. You know, we did the compassionate listening group during this meeting time, and you know, that has a, that has a, a you know, the photograph, like a screenshot, this has a video. Uh, uh, Susan said she was fine with the video, do what we want with it, so. Uh, and then, so we have four teams, you know, the Wednesday team, the, the Monday team, the just forming, so we've got a group there, and we have a new team, the second meeting for Saturdays, uh, so we've got six or seven people in that team forming. There's a test site section. So if you're, we can give you uh, permissions to edit the site. And if you want to go in and do some tests, this is just a folder for creating a page or what have you. Uh, do we have the toolkit? So in the toolkit, uh, there's the try it exercises. So each try it exercise gets its own uh, page. And then we have uh, you know, a description of it. Uh, this one is about blocks. So in the, and then there's just different, you know, headings, which in there, so these exercises are, are these, uh, less these activities, they're, they're in different stages of preparation. So, you know, trying to create like a structured headline that are, so they're all kind of uh, consistent. And then, for example, we have uh, in in this this was group team two, I think it was, and we did an exercise on on directing. And then, so in this in this meeting, we we had uh, you know one person. Let's see, one person would share, and then we'd have the others give a roadblock. You know, and so we went through and we created separate videos of each one. So there's a sample video of each of the, the roadblocks. So then we keep adding new uh, activities. So, you know, like remember the drama triangle, I created this activity for that. You know, we don't have that fleshed out yet, but we always start with our, um, you know, mirroring feelings exercise. So that has a little activity, and here's a sample of the activity of the mirroring. And so every activity kind of gets fleshed out and becomes a you know part of it. The, yeah, that's the video description. We have a sample, a video sample of it, and our group is the kind of the guinea pigs for demonstrating it. And uh, then there's various topics that I want to flesh out, like what is the culture of empathy? What is the definition of uh, empathy, what is empathic activism, you know, and these are just some concepts that more to kind of flesh out and have some written text on that. So that is a overview of, you know, and th this is something that everyone can do if you want to take, sort of adopt one of these uh, toolkit activities, you can kind of flesh it out, develop it, and turn it into a into an activity. So with that, um, is there, I would just go around any just quick feedback and then I'll stop this video. Acilia, just any feedback? Uh, no, it looks great. I'm glad, I'm happy with the, uh, the tour. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, Bill? Uh, yeah, it's amazingly, you know, we have all the stuff. I, I think um, in just seeing it, at some point you might want to simplify. Um, or think about it. I mean, at this point, I, I see it, but I just, I, I, like, if people go on, it, it seems like a steep learning curve mm -hmm. um, for somebody to really uh, maneuver it. I, all the stuff is great, um, but uh, but that's, that's what I would think about, mm -hmm. sort of making it a little bit more accessible. Mm 
Okay, so the accessibility, uh, this is the designer's site. This is for the people who are doing the designing. So we would need a whole different website that's very simple and accessible for people just taking a training. It wouldn't have all this kind of background information and that would be the goal. Uh, Varsha? Yeah. I have few questions. Maybe you can tell if this is not, uh, not the right forum. I have questions about um, activism. And to start off with, how should I identify who is my target audience and who needs it? And how do I approach them? Are there any organizations that I can talk to, like community organizations, or who are they? Where do I have to, like, how do I get started, you know? Mm -hmm. I need some step-by-step uh, process or some bullet points, what do I have to do? Like, mm -hmm. oh, great. So, so the activism is like a project of its own. And we would, you know, kind of maybe take that on as a project and talk about it, flesh it out, brainstorm, lay out a structure for how you can become an activist. Mm. So that would definitely, yeah. As you saw in the toolkit or in the topic section, there can be like a toolkit on, on how to be an activist, how to start your own empathy tent and sort of expand, you know, from there. So. And like even to design, design a uh, whatever we are doing now, that's also we are designing a program curriculum. So even for designing, we need to know who our ta target audiences are. So right now I'm imagining these are my ta target audiences, but unless we interview them, we won't know what their needs are. Mm -hmm. So I have questions about that, but I don't know if this cool. is the right Yeah. Thing. Well, we can kind of go into that later. That would be a great topic. Like what is our target audience? Who are we designing for? So that's part of the design brief. Yes. Is like who who exactly? So that would be sort of a whole topic, you know, mm -hmm. on its own to go into depth on that. So those are yeah, those are great project areas. Each of those that we we're gonna delve into and kind of flesh out. So, um, uh, Peter, just the final. No, it's, it, it seems nice to have a repository of all the stuff we do. You know, the, the truth is is that seeing my Facebook account on there is a little bit scary. And then I'm realizing, Hey, you know, I guess I'll talk to people if they see something on there, they don't like. So, mm -hmm. so that a little concern you're exercise. being publicly viewable there. So uh, listen, it's, it's my repository for memes that I find funny. So, you know, it's like, it's like the internet condensed. So that's fine with me. Okay. Well, great. Then I will stop the recording.